Morning. Are we live? The broadcast is live. Are we live? And all three of us managed to end up here. Woo! That, that is a miracle. Mark is muted. Good job. I was muted. Oh, there, there was, you are. Uh, yeah, welcome to the channel, guys. I'm gonna do the um I'm gonna do the intro because that's how you did your intro. I'm gonna do my intro. <laughs> That thing's pretty impressive. There you go. Welcome to the channel, guys. Yeah, Jeff Levin did the music, and then I just got some guy on Fiverr to do that uh, video with my logo. But um, I was going to say, have you seen my new SPTV logo? It is the tongue from Rolling Stone licking crackers that say SPTV, which I thought was very creative. <laughs> oh, my um, God. And... Uh, and I didn't think I was ever going to get rid of that MTV SB crackers. But this one, I thought, you know, it, it's, it is possible. So I've got a new one here. Um, I don't know if Claire's here. I'm going to look at the comments. And if there's some starred ones, uh, which there's not, um, that might mean that I'm on my own tonight, folks. Oh, um, but um, we, we should... Um, just so we know, there is a small rodent moratorium on my channel. I will kick you from the studio <laughs> now that I have control. We'll kick you from the studio. Um, it does remind me of a really funny joke about a little kid named Johnny that I could tell you guys later. Um, but um, what were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about all these silly hate videos that they're doing. Um, did you say something, Aaron? You muted yourself for a second. That's because I was clearing my throat. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, the um, <laughs> the amount of work that they're doing on these sites and these videos is kind of spectacular if you think about it. Like the internet unit is not a lot of people. So for them to revamp all these sites and recut videos and do like the S, what is it called? Uh, SMP, Scientology Media Productions. They're the ones that are probably... Uh, working on these videos, or maybe the guys at Gold are working on these videos. The guys at Gold don't have a lot. The Golden Era Productions, the Imp Base, they don't have a lot to do these days. I think they're just digitizing. The, what I've heard is they're digitizing uh, anything analog or video. They're digitizing that, and that they're somehow. Um, I don't know if this is true. This sounds very bizarre to me, um, Mike. I heard that they're packing the titanium capsules for CST. Yeah, I heard that too. Which and makes sense because it like, it's a large workforce and they could do a lot of repetitive <clears throat> like assembly line type of things without yeah, messing and, it up. And CST traditionally has not had many people who were qualified to even be in that location. And when you think about the fact that they have to redo those containers every time Dave comes out with a new thing or a new edition of a book. Yeah. And, and probably they're doing all the OEC vols now. Yeah. That's oh, a man. lot yeah. of work. You stuffing those things in those containers and pumping them full of argon and, yeah. you know, all that bullshit that they have to go through. You got to know, Aaron, those things were done before he redid everything. They were Incredible. all done. All the lectures, all the materials etched in stainless steel plates and gold records and all that. And so for them to spend millions and millions of dollars, and this is what I thought, Mike, I knew I, I'm going to, you're going to, you're going to listen to me say this and you're going to know it's, that's exactly what happened. Not only do the gold guys have to do it, but it's their fault that they have to do it because <laughs> they fucked up all the books and they fucked up all the lectures and they fucked up all, all the tech internationally and all the courses. And because he has to come and redo it all, now we have to spend all these millions of dollars to redo all these things. So you guys are going to be the ones that do it. Now, for the person who escapes after I shoot this video, as soon as you watch this video anonymous, anonymously, please give me some verifiable thing that you know about the embase that no one else would do, and then tell me that I'm 100% correct, and that's exactly what David Miscavige said. <laughs> yeah, you don't need anybody, anybody coming from there currently. <laughs> 
all the people that were there previously that have experienced that phenomena over and over and over can attest to the truth of that statement. Well, here's it's... the thing, you know, sometimes sometimes on my channel, I'll, I'll in a video, I'll talk about um, I'll, I'll try to highlight something uh, to Scientologists that are in the bubble that they can see with their own eyes to be like, if you're being lied about this stuff, you can literally see what what do you think is happening about the stuff that you can't see? So uh, in that vein, I want to mention this. I remember as a young staff member, young Scientologist, it being uh, very Im importantly told to us that the, the fact that this preservation of the tech project was going on and that these words were going to be inscribed and, and, and you know stored forever was why it was so important that David Miscavige spearhead the effort to verify that every single policy and bulletin in Scientology was exactly in accordance with the handwritten works of L. Ron Hubbard. And now that Miscavige had finished that holy project, the preservation of the tech can begin. So for him to now come along and be like, you all screwed it up, you all screwed me, it all has to be redone, is just something that a Scientologist who you know, maybe has a little bit of the blinders on can look at and go, he really is just lying, just all the time. <laughs> yeah, and this money is gone. Whatever money you spent on etching, it's etched. You can't, <laughs> it's not like a yeah. freaking etch-a-sketch where you <laughs> shake it and you do it again. No, that's got to get melted down and it's got to all be, get redone. So, the, the, and, and also, David Miscavige has announced publicly many times in many public places how the, this was millions and millions and millions of dollars to do this per site. Now, now if for any of you guys who don't know what we're talking about, CST is the Church of Spiritual Technology, and they have underground bunkers in mountains all over the United States where these uh, materials of these capsules, they're called time capsules, these titanium argon sealed capsules with all these archival items in it there's racks and racks and racks and racks and racks of these things that fill a tunnel and i want to say it's tens of millions per per location and there's like three or four locations mike four there's four locations yeah. so let's say it's 50 mil let's just round it up to 50 mil that money is gone it's gonna you're you paid you're gonna pay for it all over again so that's how Scientology, Scientology's talking about me licking crackers. These guys are fucking blowing $50 million of, of Scientologists money for no reason. <laughs> so that, so that cavemen can restart <laughs> civilization by somehow stumbling into one of these underground bunkers that are in the middle of nowhere where people are now. Okay. By the way, Mike, if these bunkers are so secure, how are the cavemen supposed to enter them? Oh, there's secret hieroglyphics. Of course. That are put on the outside, like the universal sign language ah. that are put on the outside that, that are instructions of how you open them. Because it's not just getting into the vault. It's also opening the titanium containers. Oh, like, yeah. how do you open them? How do you play those nickel-plated, gold-coated records? Like, they all have these pictogram instructions on yeah, how to go about true. doing this shit. I mean, this stuff is so bizarre, it makes Battlefield Earth seem like normal shit. This is the, it's just, it is sci-fi, gobbledygook, you know, over-the-top, madman hubbard egomaniac goofiness and what's so sad about it is that as mark says tens if not hundreds of millions of dollars have been wasted on this shit and they continue to do it yeah. and they will continue to keep doing it and this money is just poor. It's like being at a craps table on a big, long losing run and just watching your, your dollars go down that little slot and disappear, never to be seen again. And you get nothing out of it. Nobody gets anything out of it, but a lot of money goes down that slot. Yeah. It's crazy. 
It's crazy. <clears throat> well, when you talk about Scientology wasting money, that's a perfect setup for an anecdote. I learned this week that you guys, I don't think you've heard before. So in about 2018, uh, in LA at PAC, so for uh, PAC is L. Ron Hubbard Way, the orgs on L. Ron Hubbard Way. Uh, INCOM is a senior level Scientology org that handles all Scientology's computerization. It stands for the International Network of Computerized Organized Management. And okay, the commanding officer and deputy commanding officer of INCOM submitted a proposal to Miscavige that cost millions of dollars to revamp the entire computer network. Miscavige was furious and he said, you guys are assigned, the, I mean, these are senior executives. When was you, when did this take place? I'm gonna say about 2018. Okay, so this is you, recently. Yes, you guys are assigned to full-time, all hands regging the public for money so that you can understand that this money is not easy to come by. So the CO income and the DCO income were in the trenches with the LA regs who were committing all of the credit card fraud. So when David Miscavige then came in later and removed all the regs from post, they were <laughs> two of the people that got removed. Because they were over there making money. Yes. And they were doing money so that they could spend it on this program they wanted. Yes, and they were assigned to the decks with all of the freaking regs who spent months and months and months um, of deck work. You had the CO income and the DCO income. Wow. So just imagine Miscavige being like, you guys don't, they weren't even asking to waste money. They were spending money on important infrastructure. Yeah. He's like, how <laughs> dare you ask me to spend money in a productive <laughs> way? Well, you know, that's, yeah. and that's another thing I was just gonna say. I have another thing I wanna say about the income thing, um, which is kind of a crazy story <laughs> that ties right into your thing. But um, when, we were at the base we couldn't ha we didn't have toilet paper guys this is a three billion dollar cult we didn't have toilet paper okay i don't know how much toilet paper cost back in the 90s but i don't think it was more than it costs now and um they could not afford to pay for that and we had to fight in the financial planning of the week to get toilet paper so, um, in and some people, some people lost that fight. Yes, yeah, some people <laughs> lost that fight. No, we, no, no, that we lost that. We, we listen. We won the battle, but we didn't. It, what is it? You win. We won the war, but we win, didn't win those individual battles for the toilet paper. We didn't always yeah. win those. Um, yeah, but you know what's so insane about this, Mark? Yeah. Just think about it. Like there is tons of stories like this of yeah. Miscavige absolutely losing his shit over people spending money. Yeah. Yet if you if anybody who is watching this ever walked into his office oh my in goodness. building 36, yeah. you would you your jaw would hit the ground. Yeah, there's probably it's not just inside the office, it's outside the office. The hallways are paneled in cherry wood. Yeah. Like the floors are marble. His custom built bulletproof desk is cost forty thousand dollars or yeah. more. There's because items he got remade on his more desk. than once. <laughs> yeah. That's just there's, his desk. There's individual items on his desk that could pay for enough uh, toilet paper for all of Scientology for many, many years. <laughs> the the bulletproof glass in the windows of his office are like thousands upon thousands of dollars per pane yeah they are able to withstand like a round from an ak-47 yeah i mean th this this stuff is just insanity well I and i say in my book the cost of david miscavige's <clears throat> meals for one day were more money than it spent on an entire crew member for the year on their food what he eats in one day Anyway, yeah, because he, he always has a choice. You know? Yeah, but fin what finish what you were going to say, Mike. I, I, I interrupted you. I, I was I I was just making the point that the insanity and the double standards that exist within the Sea Org in particular when it comes to money is just bizarre. Yeah, I, I mean it's it's crazy. It you is. know, people can't go to the doctor to get their eyes checked because there isn't money in financial planning for that. But 
Dave can jump on a private jet to fly wherever he wants, whenever he wants, and d- to go have a fitting of his handmade shoes at John Lobb's in London. Yeah. And this is acceptable and has become the accepted way things are there. And it's you step outside of it and you go, my God, this is like this is this is like North Korea. Yeah, this is Kim Jong Un who has hot and cold running, you know, servants and secretaries and goes wherever he wants and eats whatever he wants and has everybody standing up and yelling and screaming and applauding him wherever he goes. And he's a complete degenerate. And everybody in his world is is suffering mightily in order to be able to stand and cheer for him. Yeah. Yeah, That's a world of Scientology. Someone was asking what could he possibly be eating that would cost that much? If I were, uh, isn't it, he's getting like sushi flown in from an expensive restaurant in Malibu. No, you know, driven to the base. (laughs) Well, okay. Driving is cheaper than flying. No, not, not when you're coming from Santa Monica, they catch it in the morning and they deliver it to the base that day. Like, but (laughs) getting 3000 bucks worth of sushi. Okay. Whatever. Not a big deal. Um, when you, that's your lunch, when you're the, the meals that we got pay, at the base, it cost a dollar per person per day. Yeah. So you're talking about 30 cents for one of our meals. That's how much yeah. was spent. So Absolutely. anyway, I was going to tell you the income story, but let's do the, uh, let's jump into questions. Uh, Claire is here and she is highlighting them. So I I'll see that. Spend, spend the next few minutes, uh, uh, jamming through some of these for you guys. Um, Jay Dice, hi from Old Bridge, New Jersey. Hey, Jay Dice. Um, we're, we get uh, some of the, uh, we get some uh, frequent flyers here. Uh, Loco Sherman One. Hey, Mike, what happened to Croc, Mr. Dillard, and Spencer from Mike Bunker's videos during the LMT days? They were the security guards at the time. I have oh. no idea where, where they are now. They may still be in the CR. I don't know. Hey, Headley, how come you says SPTV host and me and because- Aaron are just like, because I'm Chuck a host. Liver. Um, that's a new feature in StreamYard. Oh, whoa. I can one up you guys if I want. No, no, you can have the same thing on yours. It's just a it's they have another like a tagline. You could put your your Twitter handler there. I just put that as to see how it looked. It's very un uh, unsymmetrical and totally unnecessary. Oh, it is. Is that, is, is that you look like a douche with that thing? Yeah. I, by they're the way. watching on your channel. They're not wondering if you're the host. That's true. Well, um, oh, let me see. Now we're going to stop everything. We're going to see uh, where it is. Sorry, that, that was that anger streak coming out that Scientology yeah. keeps talking about. I, I know. Try to, keep, so try to much, keep it in check. So, so <laughs> much, so much anger. <laughs> um, okay, back to the comments, guys. I don't care. I'm not changing it. Uh, make go viral. Uh, short vids of Scientologists and execs swearing. Um yeah, we could do that. You know, there is a funny video. I'm, we may have mentioned it before. Um, there's a guy named Tiziano Lugli who has a video on YouTube, and it's called Shit Scientologists Say to Scientologists, Shit Scientologists Say to Non-Scientologists. And then I think there's another one or two. There's also some real fun um, videos of private investigators crashing in to Mike in a car. Like, they were following Mike. They were in rental cars and Mike was in a rental car and they crashed their rental car into Mike's rental car. And what's <laughs> so funny, when the police came, Dave LeBeau, who was the guy that crashed into the back of me, yeah, told the police that I had backed into him, that I had <laughs> stopped while driving on the road and backed into him. And I said, hey, uh, by the way, officer, they have a video <clears throat> They were videoing. They had a video camera guy in the front right seat. Why don't you take a look at their video? And did he? (laughs) Yes. And it showed them crashing into you. (laughs) That's awesome. So they dash cam their own accident. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. And then I said to the cops, "Uh, look, we're just trying to go somewhere and not have this parade of loonies following us. Um, And they said, don't worry, we'll take care of it. They made them stay. And let nice. us go, like all five of their cars yeah. were stopped. They they wouldn't let them go, and they said, "Go, we'll let them go in thirty minutes." That's so awesome. That's I don't great. think you. I don't think you put that video on your channel, have you, Mike? 
No, I don't think it is. I, I've got no. a whole bunch of these things. You should, if I ever can get my shit together, I will. You could do a reaction video to Tiziano's video. But Aaron, the video is like an hour and a half long. Oh, well, I would edit it down. Sometimes what I do is I'll take the video down and I'll edit yeah. it and then I'll re-upload it and then I'll react to the shorter it's version. It's amazing, though. You know, the funny thing is, is I noticed I was watching this video recently, Mike, but um, I noticed that you guys were at Jason Begay's house in the Malibu in yeah. one of those videos and you're showing them. So Jason used to live at this house in Malibu and he had a really long winding driveway that went up the mountain to the top of the the peak where he lived. And at the bottom of that, it was sort of a main road, a windy, one of these windy Malibu. One of the winds, one of the roads that goes over the mountains. Yeah. And there was like a parking spot at the, like a, a parking area where you could kind of pull off and look at the view. Cause you can see the ocean from there. And it was just filled with PI cars. And one of those times when this was like this, uh, not in the video that Mike did, but when I was at Jason's house, I was there doing something and I it was in the middle of the day and I had my my company van. And when I drove down that hill, there was a PI waiting there and he started following me and he was following to me to my next client. I was going to a client that day. And so I was like, oh, this is not going to be good because I don't want them to follow me to somewhere that I'm doing job. And also it was in, we were in Malibu. There's a lot of high profile clients there. I didn't want to take them somewhere that, it was going to be messy and I was trying to ditch them on the highway and they were running red lights and they were driving like insane people to try to keep up with me. And I ended up driving to the uh, Malibu courthouse, which is also uh, where they have a heavy police presence in Malibu and the police station might be part of that same government complex or something. But when I pulled up, I, I rolled down my window and I said, excuse me, sir. And there was a motorcycle cop there. And he, I said, I'm being followed by some private investigators hired by Scientology. And I'm actually fearing for my safety because they've been running red lights and they've been being very aggressively following me. And they're right behind me. And if you could take care of that, that would be amazing. <laughs> and so this guy, he literally said, no problem. And he, he gets on his radio. And then the person is starting to back up. The the person who's <laughs> following is starting to back up and he goes, no, 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 stay right there. And then as I'm driving away, there's seven police car like cars and they pull the car behind him and they pull the car next to him. <clears throat> and then all these other motorcycle cops just came out of nowhere like stormtroopers and they descended on this PI. And I thought, okay, good. Now I can go to my client. <laughs> but oh, um, we, we had a couple of stories like that with Dave LeBeau when we were in LA. Oh, One time, I, and I was with Tiziano for this particular event, and he had a friend who was in the West Hollywood PD. Yeah. And so he called his friend and he said, we're going to drive down San Vicente and we're going to wait until the light turns orange before we're going to time it to be going through a light when it's orange. Yeah. You set yourself up <laughs> because this guy's going to go through the red light. Yeah. Of course he did. So yeah. he got pulled over and ticketed for that. Yeah. <laughs> Another time we were going down sunset and or going up sunset and he had he had lost us in the traffic yeah. and he was going down the center turn lane <laughs> yeah. at 70 miles an hour trying to catch so, <laughs> trying to catch us like oh down almost goodness. the wrong side of, of yeah. sunset boulevard he got pulled over again. <laughs> I mean it was like it it became sort of a game to figure out how do you get these guys twisted up or tied up in knots or going in the wrong direction or, you know, pulled over by the cops. It was, it was fun. Yeah. Back in anyway, the good old days. I'll, I'll put a link to this uh, PI chase video and the other videos in the description. Okay. Let's rip through these. You should have used Hubbard's books for that toilet paper. That's not a bad idea because there was lots of those running around and nobody was reading them. They wouldn't even know if you ripped a bunch of pages out of one of those things. Um, I told my bro the story of OT3 um, and the bit about the H-bombs on volcanoes. I said amphetamines had nothing to do with this. <laughs> That's so massively awesome. I don't know what that last part it says, says. What do you think regarding LRH and amph psychosis? So amphetamine psychosis? Amphetamine induced oh. psychosis? I, I'm pretty sure. Uh, highly likely. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Hubbard. Um, I mean, he was into the occult and sex magic and all this. 
I'm pretty sure that dude uh, did a lot of homework for coming up with the stuff in Scientology. <laughs> that was his research. <laughs> okay. Keebler elf under a bulletproof desk is the best image. Oh, absolutely. By the Somebody way, needs to tomorrow that. night is David Miscavige shoops of the week. So oh, if you've yeah. got any, uh, if you've got any Keebler elf boss, Scientology boss, baby bulletproof desk, <laughs> shoops, um, we'll gladly show them. And also the sooner you send them, the better because, um, you know, because uh, no toilet paper. I guess they prepared you for COVID. Oh, yeah. No, we we uh, well, we didn't really wear masks. I don't think we wore masks at the end base ever. If you went to isolation, if you were sick, if at the end base you could have cancer, that was fine. But if you had a fever, you go into ISO. Um, so that's the only thing that was treated really at the end base were fevers, to, to be honest. Um, and also, if you did get sick or something like that, and they knew it, then you might go to the doctor and you could do stuff. But if there was money in FP, yeah, but you're always tired and you're always achy. So and you're always sick and the food gets you sick or this gets you sick. Um, so it, it's very hard to tell if you uh, have any kind of terminal illnesses. In the and, and I don't know if it was the same way at the int base, but at PAC and at flag, it was like. There wasn't even uh, sending somebody to ISO. They weren't even smart. Like they, there was no preventative sending. Like, so you couldn't be like, oh my God, I feel terrible. They take your temperature, you're 99 point, whatever. You could not go to ISO unless I forget what it was like 101. Let's just say it was 101. It didn't matter how crappy you felt. If you were below that thing, you had to stay on post. There was nothing like we better send this guy now before he's contagious. Yeah. They were no. only sending people to ISO after, way beyond the point. They were obviously contagious. Yeah, and also the reasons why you stayed on post was because and everybody's post was so important. It's so funny when you think back that almost every single thing that I did at the end base has been redone. Like everything we produced, all the yep. lectures, all the promotions, all the videos, all those things, they've almost for two a one been thrown away and redone again. So you could have gone to ISO for a week. You could have you know, taking that two week leave every year. There's so many things you could have done that did not necessarily need to be done. Okay, we got to rip through these. Do you suppose any government agencies watch your videos? I don't suppose. Um, all the government agencies, Linda, that we need to talk to, we've talked to directly. Like we've spent time in their office. Like we, we've we put the work in. <laughs> We're not waiting for them to find out about this on YouTube. We have told them everything we know and everything we learn where we inform the various law enforcement and government agencies. Um, right. Is that right? You guys agree with that? Absolutely. There you go. It literally makes sense <clears throat> to me. LLL to watch you guys laughing together. It's the best me medicine. Oh, oh, it literally makes me LLL to watch you guys. Well, thank you. Um, it is very insane. Some of the stuff that we witnessed and were part of. So it is fun to laugh about it. Thank you, Cheryl. Uh, Kelly Copter, hope you guys had a lovely vacation, a holiday. Welcome back. Glad to make it to the stream. Thank you, Kelly Copter. Uh, we are doing an interview with Kelly, uh, I think on Wednesday this week. You are. She has a fantastic channel. She, she went to Greenfields. No. Oh, wow. <gasps> oh, so Claire might know her. Kelly has some of the best production value videos on Scientology I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to subscribe to her. Chris Mills. Thank you, Chris Mills. Appreciate it. Um, LJ, oh, uh, Apollonia Paradise. Little Mikey and I took a three week trip from Ottawa, <laughs> thanks, Claire, to Grenada, uh, West Indies. Is it Grenada? Grenada, yeah. Grenada, West Indies, in Feb, March, sending slideshows soon. Wow, that's amazing. Cool. That might be a record. I don't think anyone spent three weeks with Mike anywhere. Mike Jr., that is. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's amazing. Um, <laughs> Okay, what do we got here? Oh, Claire, stop. Okay, hey, love these SPTV multicasts. Hey, you know, you say that. Um, StreamYard just released a new feature where we may be able to do one stream on all three of our channels at the same time. So it doesn't matter which way you tune in. So we're going to... Oh, really? Yeah. We're I'm going gonna... to talk more. Let's talk more about that on mics. On mics. Yeah. Anyway, I'm just saying we may <laughs> be able to do it all at the same time and it doesn't matter which one we're trying to figure out see the 
Mike and I, we we could do that. Aaron, he's got so many subscribers, so we need people to come to our channel. We don't need us watching us on his channel. You know what I'm saying? We have to figure all that out um, because we want to win the birthday game next year. We didn't win this year. Um, thank you. D how do you say that? Destony. Thank you, Destony. No, it's Destiny. It is Destiny. Destiny. Okay. What the? What was up with Mimi Faust's story where they were changing sign the contract that was so chanting. Insane. Chanting. Oh, chanting. Is that normal tactic because it was extra crazy? That is actually a normal kind of thing where the um, people that are recruiting you, that are trying to get you to sign the contract, they try to pump you up. Like, uh, yep. that might be some weird cult thing. Might, like, they might do that in other cults, like when they love bomb you or they kind of try to get you artificially excited. <clears throat> but I remember them when they were trying to do that to me, they were, they were like doing that. I didn't realize they did that to her as well. Um, yeah, it's kind of spooky. Have you ever seen um, that video that that uh, uh, comedian did where she joined um, Scientology? No. Uh, you mean she was talking about her real life experience? Yes. And she was so broke. She was living in her car and she joined the Sea Org. I forget who staff. it is. It's, it's a black woman who's a comedic actor. I, I don't remember her yes. name, though. Yeah. Anyway, we should you should check but, it out. Is it not Mimi Faust? Who's Mimi Faust? No, Mimi Faust was on the aftermath. Um, she's a she's an actress. She's an actress, right, Mike? Yeah. She's like a reality, a, yeah, a reality. Yeah, reality star. TV star. Yeah. Anyway, um, her mother was the date in Data Osa Int. Yes. And she's not the one who told this story. No, this is no. Tracy. Is it Tracy? Okay. The comedian Tracy. What's her name? Okay, but Mimi was on the yeah. show and she was talking about how she ended up um, homeless. Yeah, it might or be. Am I, am I getting it all wrong? Am I bastardizing no. this? I, this is a totally different gal. Okay. If I, when yeah. I remember it, um, I'll tell you. Wait, Scientology owns mountains with tunnels? How's that legal? I got questions for the government. <laughs> it's legal because they own the mountain. That's another thing. Like, you can't buy toilet paper. Scientology's buying freaking mountains. <laughs> well, pots of them. Well, well whatever. Um, <laughs> Lena won. Yeah. They own mountains. They own mountain sides <clears throat> or mountain faces or, yeah, sections of a mountain. Um, but, yeah, I'm pretty sure if you dig a long tunnel into mountain, you got to own everything above that, too. Um Lena won. We should talk about that story. Didn't they build one somewhere in Wyoming or something? And they were like halfway. Uh, they got they got nuked. Yeah, they couldn't get, ever get planning permission. Yeah, they bought a they mountain. They bought the property. <laughs> they bought a mountain and they couldn't dig a tunnel into it. <laughs> they bought. They, <laughs> they did. They started and they dug it, and the government made them put the dirt back and exactly take all their right. stuff out <laughs> and take all the shit out. Yeah. They spent millions and millions and millions <laughs> yes. setting up the infrastructure yeah. and. Bringing in all the equipment and blah, oh, blah. And, as and, Aaron and would say, David Miscavige done messed up. up. <laughs> messed up. Sorry. Um, Casey Isaac. Is it Cassie or Casey? I, I, whatever I say. Who are you asking? I, I don't know. But whenever I say <laughs> it, it's always wrong. Welcome back, y'all. By the way, nine videos uploaded in the past 45 minutes to the LR The Facts channel. Wow. This is what tax-free money goes to. Remind us who to contact in Congress about this, please. I'm telling your you guys. Your congressman. Yeah, your congressman. You can write to your congressman and say, why are we giving <clears throat> tax? Why are we paying for uh, Scientology to make cracker liquors about Mark Headley? What's yeah. up with that? <laughs> yeah, they're, go they're going lunatic about Leah right now. They are. And I am going to do a video about that maybe tomorrow or the day after. Because there's some, uh, there's some buzz. I mean, as per usual, everything they say is a lie. Yeah. They, they. Anyway, I, I'll cover that. It's, it's getting really crazy. Yeah. The so they have. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say the reaction. The, you can always tell when things are not going well in the world of Miscavige by the franticness of the reaction that comes out of Osa. Yeah, because they're the ones that get hammered and pounded about, I you know I'm being attacked and this judge is gonna has ruled me a, a defendant in this case and that I've been served and there's all this shit on the internet and no, you know, nobody's doing anything about it and so wow things go into kooky overdrive of doing 
the most absurd stuff and the more absurd it is and the more of it there are the greater the impact so the good news we're obviously reaching one of our target audiences very effectively totally Okay, let's jam through these. It's Emma's 11th birthday. Maybe wish her a happy birthday. Please also, next time, P. all follow, get into a drive through and order 50 McFlurries because they take forever. <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> That's, really, uh, uh, That's actually really funny. Thank you, Brenda. Um, thank you. So glad you're all back. I'm stopping with calls. Glad you guys had fun. Did any private investigators show up on your cruise? No, but we were joking about how that would be really fun if you were like a private investigator and you got hired to go on a cruise to follow a bunch of ex-Scientology people. That sounds like the best job ever. Have you heard of Ono, oh Ross, and Carrie infiltrate COS? Oh, yes. yes. Um, I think, Mike, have you been on their podcast? Yes, twice. Yeah, they have a podcast, so Mike's yeah. been on it. Um, yeah, uh, what is the story behind Cracker Liquors? Scientology uh, did a video, a hate video about me, and they have accused me of licking crackers. And that is why we talk about cracker licking so much. It seems pretty insane. I never thought I would be doing as much cracker licking content as I've done in the past. Tiffany years. Haddish, yes. Tiffany yes, Haddish that's right. is the woman. She was <clears throat> broke, she was living in her car, and she was on Sunset, and she walked up, and they said, oh, we could do this, and you could work here, and we'll pay you, and everything. And she, I want to say she either joined staff or she joined the Sea Org. I think she joined the Sea Org because they, the whole story how she left was because they put her in birthing with all these other people. Like, she went into these rooms with, like, 20 gals, and they were like, oh, there's no way I'm sleeping with all these people in this room and these bunk beds and all this. And then that's <laughs> it. That was her Sea Org career was very short-lived. <laughs> Um, thank you, uh, Music from Mars. Um, uh, sorry I'm late. Did you see John Oliver's joke? Yes, I did, and I mentioned it earlier, and obviously because you're late, you didn't hear that. Missed you guys so much last week. Love from Columbus, Ohio. Thank you, Courtney. I appreciate it. Yes. Um, Aaron will do a video about the John Oliver thing, I'm pretty sure. Are you going to do the 30 comments? No. I'm just... No. Uh, oh. We're moving. Yeah, we're going to go over to Aaron's Time's channel. Up. Thanks. Thanks for everybody who we're going uh, to Mike's channel comment now. in the videos. And um, um, we're going to end here and go to his thing. I am going to do the outro because I am OCD like that. I'm, so, I'm out of here. I'll so see we you will over there. see you on the other channel. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. Bye.